All right, we're gonna dive into how I analyze short-term rental markets and properties for profitable investments. This is exactly how I underwrite properties, markets, deals in the short-term rental space. You guys, I always say there's a lot of changes going on right now. And one of my favorite quotes from Peter Drucker is the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence itself, it's to act with yesterday's logic. What we did yesterday doesn't work quite as well anymore. Having a short-term rental the last couple of years was like having toilet paper during COVID and everybody was making money and that is not the case as much anymore. And so these markets are starting to become more normalized. And because of that, like any investment, you better know your numbers. So guys, my name's Sean Moore. I've been in real estate investing now for 22 years full time. So those of you who don't know me, you find more about me on vodacy.com or on my YouTube channel. But just so you guys know, I've been investing in short-term rentals since 2006. And I've helped almost 2,000 people build lifestyle, financial freedom, investing in vacation homes. In fact, we've got over $100 million in acquisitions over the past three years alone. So we understand how to look and analyze these numbers, and which is why I would love to show you exactly how we do that in this workshop today. So my goal for the workshop is to roll up our sleeves, dive right in, show you exactly how we analyze markets and properties. We're gonna look up and understand where the money is being spent in your market. You've got to know that. Know where the money's being spent so you can get your unfair share of it. How to use the market and property data to make wise investment decisions. I'm very, very conservative and I buy a lot of properties, but everything's about the numbers. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to show you where I believe a lot of mistakes are being made when running the numbers. And when people are looking at the numbers, I'm gonna show you exactly some exact examples of where mistakes are commonly found and where, what, what we can do about it. I'm also gonna show you the exact process we've used to analyze and purchase, like I said, over $100 million in properties over the past couple of years. So those who capitalize from the current times will be the forward thinkers who understand the numbers. How well do you understand the numbers? Ask yourself that question. What is the average nightly revenue range for your property size and type in your market? These are all questions you should know the answer to. What is the average occupancy in your property size and type in your market? What is the total number of properties of similar size and type in your market? And also, what is the total revenue being spent in your market year over year for the past three years? So you can see whether your market's going up, whether it's going down, whether it's stagnant, what's going on in your market. These are all questions that you should know the answer to. So you must take time to understand the numbers. You and you alone are responsible for underwriting your deals. The problem is a lot of people rely on third parties to select and underwrite the deals for them and that they are expected to sign big checks, sign on the dotted line, buy properties, and many times they don't understand the numbers. So we're gonna dive right in and show you exactly how we do this and what some common mistakes are. So this morning, I had a property that was sent over from a realtor in St. George, Utah. Really hot market. I actually own properties there. Really um, Zion National Park. You got some national parks down there in the deserts, uh, the, the Red Rock Deserts of Utah. And the realtor called me up and said, Sean, you gotta look at this property. It's on fire. It's amazing. The property's beautiful. It's killing it as a short-term rental. So I said, awesome, send it over. He knows we buy him. So I said, send me over the property. Here's a picture of the Zillow listing, 1.75 million. Looks like a really, really nice property. When we go through it, the property is really nice. It's you know beautiful views, beautiful setup, right on the golf course, Red Rock views. You see Snow Canyon National Park, all these different things. Great, great property. Lots of reasons why it should perform. A lot of you may see that, and you're going to go to some of the common tools out there. You know, B&B Calc, Rabu, STR Insights, AirDNA, MashVisor, all these different tools, and we want to go there and we want to say, okay. I'm gonna to try to do a little bit of underwriting on my own, right? So I'm gonna plug the numbers in. So I'm gonna show you what happens when we do that. And then I'm gonna show you why it can be misleading and mistake a little bit. This part, property in particular, I'm gonna to go to AirDNA because I believe AirDNA is the most, the most accurate tool out there. We've used a lot of data tools. I believe by far and away, they're the gold standard when it comes to data. But even AirDNA, when you go to AirDNA, they've got a tool called Rentalizer. And it allows you to go in and type in the address, the Zillow listing, the bedroom and you put in your bedroom count, your bathroom count, the number of guests. And I know this is a little bit small on the screen. I'm going to zoom in for you. But this one, we put the address in. I put four guests. And then it also arbitrarily at the bottom there and underneath of this, if you were online, you would see the list of comps that it pulls. It arbitrarily pulls comps. And it says it pulled 12 out of 45 comps that it found. And so, and I say arbitrarily because 
software tools can only look at hard data points like bedroom count, bathroom count, number of guests, location, how far away from the location of this individual property are, like when they run a radius around another property. So it pulls these arbitrary comps and it comes up with a number. This number, this property is supposed to be making $60,000 a year in annual gross revenue, 286 and 958 58% occupancy. Maybe that's right, maybe it's not. You should know why it is or isn't right. If I move on and I adjust the guest count and I go to six bed or six guests from four to six on the three bedroom, which is probably likely, right? We're probably gonna host six guests. It jumps it to $96,000. It pulls some different comps, the numbers go up, everything looks a lot better. So I'm like, oh, well, I'll just do six guests. So I can promise you there's not a $36,000 gap between four and six guests. But according to the, the data that the DNA is pulling, it does. Then if I jump into eight guests, it actually drops the revenue to $78,000. So now, if you're new at this game, you're getting pretty confused, right? You're saying, hey, what am, what, am, what am I to believe here? And what if I get the guest count wrong? Or maybe I just do six guests because that's gonna give me a lot more money in, in my pocket at the end of every year. That's not exactly the case. So what you have to do though, these tools can be very, very useful. We have to know how to extract the data from them to see the whole picture. So I'm gonna show you what we would typically go do. We're gonna go back into AirDNA and I'm gonna look at the overview page. A couple things I'm gonna look at. The arrow is showing you a market grade that AirDNA gives this market. Right now it's a B, a B market and this grade jumps around but I want you to ignore it. I want you to throw it out the window because this is a grade based on somebody else's criteria, not your criteria. I want you to grade a market based on your criteria. So what I'm gonna do, throw out that grade. Next thing I'm gonna look at is how large is the market? When I'm running averages or you're running pulling data and you're running numbers based on averages in a market, we have to have a large enough cross section of data for us to trust that the outliers kind of even themselves out. So I'm looking for markets over 100 properties and ideally 100 properties in the bedroom count that I'm looking at. This market has about 1400 listings. We're looking at three bedrooms, there's three or 400 listings in there. So that, that's okay. We're like, okay, I can trust that I'm gonna get a large enough cross section of data to be able to trust that. So then I'm gonna go into the tab on the, the, on the next tab down, which is occupancy. I need to know occupancy if I'm gonna run my revenue ranges on a property. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna, that first circle is going to be telling me that I'm gonna say, okay, I need to make sure that I filter this out, right? I need to filter it to three bedrooms and then my price tier, I wanna always be all. I wanna see, I wanna see all, every property in there in the price tier, and we wanna filter that down. And then I'm gonna go download the monthly occupancy for the past three years. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing for rates. I'm gonna filter it out, three bedrooms, all, all bathroom or all uh, price tiers. Again, I wanna see all price tiers, and you'll understand what price tiers are in just a minute here. Then I'm gonna go down, not that first section, I'm gonna go down to the second section, I'm gonna download the monthly average nightly rate for the past three years, and I'm gonna pull that off of their DNA. Because right now, all these graphs don't mean a lot to me. I need to put it into, into a picture that I can actually understand. And then I'm gonna to go to market revenue, total revenue in the market, right? What is, the, what is this market doing? Or is there more money being spent in the market? Is there less money being spent? So again, I'm gonna go filter it down to the three bedroom properties, and I'm gonna download this, this data from here. I'm gonna pull it out, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a sheet that we have put together. This is our market revenue sheet, and this is going to paint the picture of the market for us. And so I'm actually going to just copy and paste all that information that I just pulled into my market revenue projection sheet. Then what it's gonna do is it's going to tell me a few things. I'm gonna be able to see what the occupancy is doing in the area. Is it flatlining? Is it going up? Is it going down? Most markets are gonna be pretty level in occupancy. This one goes the past 36 months average, 58%, 24 months average is 57%, 12 month average is 57%. So we're pretty flat on occupancy. That's good, I need to know what occupancy is. Then I wanna know what is that average nightly rate range Range. This one particularly runs from $185 to $347. So that's a big deal for me. I need to know what that average nightly rate range is every single night because every property doesn't make the same amount of money, but I, there is a market revenue range, right? It's We can't just go say, well, I want $1,000 a night. The market, top of the market's 350, it's 350. 
right? And so maybe you have an outlier, but we don't want to underwrite as an outlier. So I need to know what that range looks like. And then ultimately, what would that projected gross revenue be on the, the you know, and I look at it for a three year trailing period. I want to see, is it going up? Is it going down? But really what I'm looking at is the past 12 months. It's the most relevant information for me as an investor. I want to see what is, what does that revenue range look like? Properties in this go anywhere from 30, 40,000 all the way up to 73, 74,000. Then what I really want to see is the market going up or is it going down? How much money is being spent in the market and is it year over year more money being spent? You hear a lot that, hey, the market's changing on us. There's not as much money being spent in the market. Everybody's making less. Everybody's slice of the pie is getting less because inventory has been skyrocketing, but the total dollars being spent is the only thing I care about. I know how to go get my unfair share of business. I care if the consumer is going and spending money in that market. And in this case, it goes from 2.5 million, 2.8 million to 3.7 million. So there's a lot more money being spent in this market. So that tells me market's going up. I have a good idea of my revenue range here. And I'm gonna, that paints the picture for the market. Now, this is where the software tools start to fall off a little bit. Because now I have to decide where do I fall on that scale with this property. Well, I happen to know I'm gonna go do a little bit more research in that market and look at the top properties on AirDNA. I'm gonna go look at who's, who's performing the best, who's performing the worst, and find some comparables that I choose based on property location, the amenities, all those different things that, um, you know, the amenities are things that the software tools many times leave out. I happen to know in this market, being close and having those really great views of the of either like Zions or Snow Canyon, the Red Rocks, being on golf courses, those types of things make a difference. This property has all that. So this property has the potential to operate at the very top of the market. It makes sense that the property's killing it as a short-term rental right now. So the problem is when I go put in the numbers, even when I select 57% occupancy, very high side on the luxury side on average nightly rates, my gross revenue is $73,000. There's a rule of 10%, you guys, in the short-term rental game. The rule of 10% that I follow, and it's usually 10 to 12% now that interest rates have gone up a little bit, is that if you're going to finance a property and you have full, full time or uh, full service management on that property, you need to generate about 10 to 12% of your acquisition cost is about your break-even mark. So at a 1.275 per purchase price, that means my break-even on revenue is about $125,000 to $130,000. So right there, that's a red flag for me, that this property might not be a great investment. But knowing that rule, I'm still gonna go plug it in to what we call our STR Investment Analyzer Sheet. And I'm gonna plug in the actual nightly rates, my actual acquisition costs, all of my expenses and everything else, and let's see what that says. And so if I take the very high side at $350 a night, 57% occupancy, $73,000 in gross revenue, Problem is, I don't know if you guys can see this, but that's a negative $49,100 every single year. I don't know about you, but a property that's absolutely killing it, one of the best properties in the market, losing $50,000 a year is not that exciting to me. So knowing that, if I would have just went off of what that realtor told me without understanding how to dive into my numbers, every single thing the realtor told me was true, except for the fact of running the actual numbers and losing money. It is one of the nicest properties in the market. It is killing it at high occupancy and high nightly, high nightly rates in that market for the market. And so it's doing really, really well performing all the things that he told me, except for when I plug the numbers in based on that acquisition price, I'm losing money. And so it's not as exciting of an investment for me. If I'm trusting somebody else to run the numbers for me, I might not know what that looks like. Now, AirDNA, Rentalizer, there was anywhere from 60,000 to 90,000 in revenue. Even on the high side of that, I would still be losing money. But, if, but you can see that when we adjusted a few things in that rentalizer, it didn't give me an indication of what does that $60,000 even mean? What does the $78,000 mean? What does the $90,000 mean? When I go back and I go back into our, our sheet right here, that I know what that means. That means I have to be at the very top of that market, which I would be with this property, but I'm not making any money. So hopefully, that, hopefully that's making sense. The only thing that, you know, another, some people will say, okay, maybe you don't make any money, you negative cash flow, but your internal rate of return is pretty good because that property is appreciating at 5% appreciation after five years, you've got about $350,000 in equity. That's okay, but that equity only means anything to me if I sell the property. 
I buy properties to cash flow. And even at the five year period, I still have, I'm still negative cash flow. I'm getting a little better by improving the property, but I'm still negative $34,000 a year. It's not a very exciting investment for me personally. I don't know about you guys, but I know a lot of people who get those calls from realtors who are experts in the game, so-called, and not that the realtor's telling anything wrong. He's saying exactly what's happening, but he's not pulling it all the way through to see that you're losing money. So let me give you another example real quick. This property was a property that we found in Blue Ridge, Georgia. And three bedroom property right by downtown Blue Ridge, really nice area, brand new build, um, new construction, nothing, you know, nothing that, uh, no, no history or anything, 550. Talked to some management companies, realtors in the area, and they said, you know, I don't know, I don't think this property is going to do as well, um, that well right now. You know, there's, the market's a little bit more saturated. It's not doing really, really well. And to me, I don't care about saturated markets. Just so you guys know, the higher, the more saturation usually means more demand. And so everybody's slice of the pie gets smaller, but I'm not trying to get my unfair share. Like I said, I know how to get my unfair, or I'm not, I'm try, not trying to get my fair share. I'm trying to get my unfair share. So because of that, when I go in and hear that's the reason why I shouldn't go there, I still my, it still piques my interest. So I say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna dial it in. And I'm gonna do the exact same process. I'm gonna look at the property, new construction, pretty nice, nothing super special about it. It's got a nice yard area, a little nice. We could we could dress this up a bit, you know. We've got not really long range views, but my location's great. If I go in, take this address, put it in the rentalizer, four guests spit me out around $75,000 in acquisition. I jumped that to six guests, $75,000 in gross revenue, excuse me, not acquisition, $75,000 in gross revenue, and then $77,000 in gross revenue if I jump into eight guests. So it's, this one on Rentalizer staying pretty consistent between seventy-five, dollars $77,000 in gross revenue is the projection. Now, is that good? Is it bad? I don't know, right? This is the problem. All these third-party tools, they do all this stuff to, to compile all this data and pick the best comps for us arbitrarily based on hard data tools, but this business is not always hard data tools. Somebody in that comp could be delivering an amazing experience and doing a great job, and you could be, you might think you're gonna make more money, or a comp that you know you're across the street from and you're really close to it, but they're on the lake and you're not, or they're on the river and you're not. That could make a big difference in the numbers, or vice versa. You could pull a comp that's not on the river and you are, and it's gonna to show too low. So the problem with these tools is they're showing all these numbers, and we don't know what that means yet. So I have to dive deeper. Again, go back to AirDNA, be throw that out. I don't care about the market grade. It's got 1,500, 1,600 active listings. We're good, more than 100, so I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna go download my occupancy. I'm gonna go download my nightly rates, and I'm gonna go download total market revenue. I'm gonna go put it in my sheet, and I'm gonna see what this paint, what picture this paints. And my occupancy looks pretty dang good. My nightly rates, 199 to 440. My total overall gross revenue continues to go 42 to like 93. I'm like, okay. Based on my 10% rule, I only have to be about in the middle of the market to make money or to start breaking even and making money. So, so, so now the light bulbs are starting to go off for me based on acquisition price and kind of seeing these revenue. And then is the market going up or down? 25 million, 29 million, 30 million, large market, like lots of money being spent there. So I'd like to go get a piece of that money is what I'd like to do. So I'm going to dive deeper. I'm going to put that in. And now I'm going to go say, okay, based on this property, where am I going to fall? How do I know what works for this market? I know I know, lakefront, waterfront, long range views, close to amenities. Those things all make a big difference in this market, particularly to be able to stand out and get toward the top side of the market. I don't have the long range views. I got great location. I've got really nice construction that I can put together a really nice experience. I've got some nice space, but I don't have waterfront and they don't have long range views. And so I need to take that into consideration when I'm looking at the comps. Well, overall in this scenario, I feel like I'm gonna be a little bit better than, than the mid scale and somewhere in that mid scale to upscale range. And then I'm gonna be around that 57% occupancy, but I'm not gonna to be toward the top of this market, most likely with this house. And so even optimize, I'm gonna probably be toward that upsell, upscale side. So knowing that, I'm gonna go put it into my market revenue projection sheet. I'm gonna be really conservative at the $65,000 gross revenue mark. 315 a night, 57%. And then all of a sudden I look over here and say, okay, what do, what do my returns look like now? Well, pretty modest, 3% cash on cash return roughly. You know, we, 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 so we've got some positive cash flow there. We know we've got some upside in the market. So Rentalizer in this case, 
really was probably pretty accurate. I, I, it's probably, it was a little higher than I'm projecting being really conservative at 65 and it was telling me 75 to 77. That was pretty accurate. And again, that wasn't, that wasn't on the bottom side of the market, even at 75, 77, I'm still in that upscale range, right? And so that's a big deal. And so Rentalizer was fairly accurate, but I didn't know that until I dove deeper or I wasn't confident in it, right? Because I've seen it accurate. I've seen it not accurate. I've seen it too high. I've seen it too low. I've seen it completely miss, right? And so, but it was pretty close in this case. And then I'm going to go look at a five-year pro forma to make some of my buying decisions based on my criteria of whether this is a good investment for me. So I hope that's making sense, guys. What we do is not hard in that it's not complicated. It's just that most people don't understand, fully understand the game and fewer actually put it into practice. So my goal for this workshop and showing you this is to have you walk into this with your eyes wide open. Paying the ignorance tax is expensive and not knowing your numbers is even more expensive. And so I'm going to do something I've never done before. We've, I'm going to give you access to all of our underwriting tools absolutely free. And this was a hard decision for me. This has always been reserved for our high-end mastermind members. We've been underwriting deals like this for years and years, and we know we've got it dialed in and it's very accurate, right? We're still, we're trying to, we're trying to get the most accurate numbers that we can predictably plan on as investors. And we've been doing this for a long time. On average, last year, we tested almost 150 properties. We were off by 3%. We were average within 3% of our actual numbers at the end of the year. So we feel really confident about this. And I've always kind of been torn of whether to make this available or not. However, I'm seeing a lot of people diving in right now, especially now that the market's changed. Now that just having a property doesn't make you money. And my goal is to have people understand their numbers. It's unacceptable to get into a game not knowing your numbers. There's so many other things you have to do to succeed, but it starts with your numbers. So I'm gonna give you access to what we put together. We put together a school called Data Sense by Vodacy. So Data Sense is if you go there, you can get absolutely free access to all of this. It's called it's at www.schoolskool.com forward slash STR Data Sense. So where that's gonna take you to is a community page. And we've got it inside of a school platform. And where you're gonna start right in the community section, you can go introduce yourself, you can ask questions, there's other people in there running numbers, you can bounce ideas off, I've got some trainings in there. But you're gonna to go to the classroom section. When you go to the classroom section, you got two spots you can go. First one, absolutely all worksheets, all absolutely free access to everything I just showed you. And so you can plug your numbers, you can extract those numbers. You will need AirDNA. We pull the numbers and these sheets are built to pull off of AirDNA. And so you are gonna wanna use AirDNA for sure. You also have the option, when you get in there, if you feel like you need some more help, I've got full training on all this for 97 bucks. So you can, you can pay $97 and access that second one. And you, it, there's details in there on how to do that. And you'll get all the tools, but also detailed training on actually how to do it with examples, more examples of what I just showed you, a way slowed down version of how to copy and paste, how to pull them out, all that stuff. Now, again, you will need AirDNA. I can't publish this, but we have a significant discount off of AirDNA for our Vodacy family. And so when you go in there and you do decide to run down this road, when you're gonna use AirDNA, get in there and you can get AirDNA at a discount, which is gonna be available just for our Vodacy family. So go into Data Sense by Vodacy, school.com, absolutely free. And so you can go out and get all these tools so that you start diving in with a full knowledge of exactly how to underwrite your own deals. I really challenge you guys not to rely on other people to run your numbers for you. Like I said, it's your responsibility alone to understand and underwrite your deals. I've never let anybody else underwrite my own deals. As long as I've been doing this, I outsource a lot of things, but I'm writing the check for these properties and I wanna understand the numbers. I wanna understand exactly why I'm buying them, what my potential is in the market so that we can make good solid decisions moving forward. So best of luck, I hope you enjoy this, cheers.